Hey everyone, this is Alex USA Days, and I've been asked a question about what is the difference between QA engineer, automation QA engineer, uh, full stack QA engineer, and other QA engineer titles. What are different tools, responsibilities? Um, what what are the differences between those roles, right? So the one that is very common and you will see any positions is just called QA engineer. Uh, the previous term that was used for that is manual QA. Now companies tend to go away from manual QA because QA now encompasses a lot of things, including like using AI for assistant testing or even basic like Postman, um, verification of API, some you know snippets of a little code here and there like sprinkled around your responsibility. So in general sense, it is not pure manual QA. There could be some advanced tools or techniques, but um, the job is still there. Responsibility is still there. Someone has to do it. So the company shifted mostly from like manual QA to the QA engineer, software QA engineer, um, QA analyst, and other roles for testing. Now, one of the main things that you will do in this role as a manual QA or QA engineer, uh, you will look at user flows from the user perspective. So doing end-to-end -end runs and catch of functional and UX uh, UI issues. Now, it will greatly depend uh, what exactly you will be doing as a tester based on the product. But in general sense, if we will talk about web, and um, mobile technologies, like apps and web um, web apps, you will be doing um, runs in the UI. You'll be following the user flows. Uh, your job will be to analyze requirements and create uh, test cases, checklists, uh, maybe update test plans. You will do manual uh, feature testing. When developers complete a feature, you will verify the feature completed properly. Uh, you will do some exploratory testing. Uh, you will go through end-to-end -end runs and user flows. Uh, you will look at the edge cases. Uh, you might be working with uh, test data, uh, creating test data, uh, preparing specific scenarios for tests. You will do um, bug logging if you find issues. And the typical tools that you will use for this would be Jira, a test, a test rail, Postman, you will use different browsers, mobile devices and emulators and tools for those mobile devices and emulators. Um, you will use like dev tools. Maybe you'll be looking at the networking tab and looking at the documentation and testing against the requirements. So that, that will encompass your like manual QA job, QA engineer job. You might be using AI here and there, mostly for assistance in terms of um, test case generation or like overlooking uh, if they, there's AI implemented somewhere in the testing process, overlooking the results of that. You might also be kicking off uh, test runs. So like click and run button somewhere in the pipeline if it's set for you and analyzing the logs. So, I mean, you will be participating um, in many parts of the, of the development process from the tester's perspective, uh, from the documentation stage, when the requires being worked on, groomed, you, you'll be asking questions how to test this and so on. Um, this role, again, it's kind of changing. You can still call it manual QA. You can call it QA engineer. A lot of companies just call it QA engineer now, uh, avoiding the uh, word manual because, you know, there's tools involved that are not specifically manual. Um, that, you, that will be your career you can be there in junior role, in mid role, in senior role. And then, I mean, you can you can stay there in that role, be an expert, especially if you start like gaining expertise in a particular field, let's say maybe healthcare. Uh, and then within that field, you might start gaining, uh, gaining expertise uh, in a specific testing activities uh, like localization or accessibility. I mean, they're always ways to go deeper uh, and become industry expert or some specific sort of testing expert was in this role. So this is all like your regular QA engineer uh, stuff. And again, your day will look something like that. You'll get to work, you will participate in meetings, 
um, groomings, looking at the requirements, you will create your test scenarios, you will execute them, you will update them, um, you will see what's the priority for today in testing, what kind of things, maybe there are like new build coming up, what things you should prepare in terms of test data. Um, after the execution, you will uh, open bugs if you find issues, you will prepare test reports, and so on. Okay. Uh, the next uh, thing is, or the next position is automation QA. Uh, sometimes can be software developer in test. So automation QA would be who is doing any sort of automation um, uh, with like tools and framework. As that role will include probably what, what you do as an automation, but also more from um, the ICD side, um, kind of organizing the whole process of testing and reporting a little bit better. So it's like a senior automation kind of a thing. There, there is a you know gray line there. But uh, as a QA automation engineer, as that you will mostly focus on uh, creating code to automate and then integrating that code in CI CD pipeline. So making sure when developers create new build, your test uh, code kicks off or you maybe run it regularly like nightly with a big test suits. And then you will look at the reports of that automation and see what is failing. You will investigate why it's failing and see if it's a real bug or maybe you need to update your automation because something changed in the application. Um, you will decide what to automate, what are the priorities. So there could be like a, a UI focused automation. So you, there could be API focused automation or some sort of integration. Your job will be building uh, automation test framework and uh, then scripts and then maintaining it. Uh, if you're just starting fresh and there's no automation, it will take you some time to establish the automation. But once it is established, you will be adding more test cases to that automation. Uh, the test cases will be defined um, what needs to be added, maybe collectively within the team, maybe by you and other QAs and QA manager, based on what is um, feasible to add to automation. Because, I mean, you don't want a fragile automation that will break all the time because automation can break a lot if our application is actively being developed and a lot of things are changing fast. So you're not going to automate everything. You have to choose what makes sense to automate. Uh, once the automation is established, uh, your, a lot of your responsibilities will be add new stuff to automation when new things come out, uh, functionality changes, and then also maintain an existing one. Like once you have a mature test suit, automation test suit, a lot of it will be you maintaining it, making sure it's up to date with every release, then uh, running it or having some schedule run it and then looking at the reports and analyzing it and making sure, you know, if something that fails, it's not a real bug, it's something you should be fixing, maybe updating some test data or the test scenario. And if it is fails because of a real bug, then you will open uh, the real bug. So maintaining reports, uh, fix tests, review test code, and the tools, the typical tools that you uh, will use in this position will be Playwright, Cypress, uh, Selenium, some sort of API testing with rest assured requests. Again, maybe Postman as well, uh, PyTest, JUnit test and G. You'll use Git. AI tools, maybe Docker, even sometimes maybe like SQL uh, could be some sort of a load testing, stress testing, and so on. So creating automation, maintaining automation, looking at the reports, um, analytics of what the tests bring and kind of being up to date uh, with your product in terms of what things are relevant and what you should be automating and testing. All right, so that's another role. Again, you can grow in that role and uh, in terms of AI in this role, there are MCP servers now that are doing some automation. So in a way and, and in a sense, if you will start using AI for automation, your job will be to kind of orchestrate the AI effort for creating the test cases and making sure that the test cases are uh, reasonable. They're testing what they're supposed to do. So you will be doing your QA automation uh, with help of AI and kind of maintaining and overlooking what AI is doing. 
all right and the last one of the hands-on like we're not talking about manager's role right now just kind of just qa responsibilities there's a set of things we can call here um one of the positions how you can call it is full stack qa uh the other name for it would be like qa consultant where you coach devs on how to test and the other one would be like agile qa so it's like a big bundle but essentially you're like one man team sometimes and like you're doing everything so that means you're doing responsibilities of a manual qa of an automation qa kind of build into the team process and you're responsible for uh testing processes and you're helping others to test uh maybe developers even testing you're telling them what to test uh you can be prepare preparing some uh procedures for them how they send code to you what they need to do before they do it like so uh maybe you will establish some sanity checks for them when one developer is looking at other developers work briefly before it's being sent to you like if you're a single qa and you're like a full stack qa you have a bunch of devs you want to organize process in a way when you're not the bottleneck not everything testing is your responsibility so you need to have the process that actually helps you to reasonably test product uh and plus maintain the development speed some if somewhat possible right so as a full stack QA engineer or a QA consultant or even an agile QA that is built into agile team and have all the testing responsibilities uh you will own the quality from end to end that means you will have manual testing covered when needed you will do some automation and uh, create a framework and tools to automate you will look into back end so it's front end both and back end so integration api testing um you will have some sort of exploratory testing you will have to cover the completed uh features uh before you kind of say QA is done they look good let's move forward with them uh you'll have to decide what what out of those features uh you can automate and create automation test suits and add them to regression um you'll maintain test data uh you will have to talk about test strategy test plans uh priorities coverage i mean this is not going to be just your decision you will talk with the product owners and product management there will be a lot of discussion uh initiated by you in terms of driving the quality building in the quality and uh including the strategy and process like what kind of devices are our priority what kind of browsers we're going to support first what kind of things that are the priority understanding what are the critical user flows and making them like p0 the most important regressions and so on um so you will work with logs with test data with environments with pipelines you will coach the team including developers on how to test on what quality is responsibilities of uh in different stage of different parties and coverage testability of things so anywhere from the documentation stage defining the requirements asking questions how we're going to test this to the regression reporting and like analytics and logs when the testing is done so your tools essentially here is everything from manual plus qa automation uh if we also bring ai in the picture again same thing like in uh manual using ai to help you with test generation overviewing what is being generated right um and then with automation and the ai same thing like if ai is running testing something overviewing the results or it helps you generate the test cases um making sure that those test cases for regression or just for automation are solid now uh, as a qa engineer throughout my career i work in all of those roles uh in different companies different products so even though there will be a difference based on the product where you work right is it hardware is it software is it combination of both is it regulated industry less regulated is it some so social media product uh or maybe it is like financial product and so on there will be differences um what you actually do and how you actually test but in general like the core responsibilities of what i talked about they're going to look something like this so from your qa engineer role 
your uh, QA automation role into your full stack QA roles, you will have those will be the responsibilities plus um, like understanding your industry, your specifics and your testing process. Okay. So hopefully that clarifies it. If it doesn't, I mean, I'm going to uh, have this information uh, in the description in the video and also feel free to message me. You can leave a comment or you can check out my Patreon uh, and send me a message there. And if you want to talk a little bit more about this, um, that, right? So this was Alex, you say days. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.